or to put it more appropriately, there should be. At a deeper level, the idea of human development has a moral and ethical content. It has a moral and ethical moorings. But it's the pressure for rapid material growth, and especially in developing countries, that suppresses this aspect of the development debate. It does not mean that the moral dimension has disappeared, or that uh, it can be set aside for the moment, or it's irrelevant for the moment, because moral issues remain deeply embedded in the notion of human development, even when it conveys the impression of resting upon obvious material factors. Because, uh, mo and, and of course, most of the human development criteria are seen as tangible, visible things that are indicative of what is regarded as development, or further uh, as prosperity. But both development and prosperity, uh, because they are understood as uh, quantifiable concepts, attract economists more. And this is the kind of thing we come to engage with. But are they ends in themselves? Because this is a question that I put to uh, some uh, some of the younger people who accompanied members of the Finance Commission and we sat together for tea at, at, at the mess there. And uh, I said, is development an end in itself? Is prosperity an end in itself? And initially there was a bit of a shock uh, because they felt that it was an end in itself. But I think we need to continually put to these, to them the question to or for what purpose, development for what purpose, Pro prosperity for what purpose. And we also need to confront each of the answers that we receive after asking this question. We need to ask the same question all over again, for what purpose. And uh, what the idea of human development ultimately seeks is something rather, something a little more intangible and less quantifiable actually. Something that in common uh, conversation, if you were to come across, people would say quality of life. Now it means a lot of things, you know. Uh, in part, this, this long term objective of development and the pursuit of prosperity is explained by Amartya Sen. He uses the words advancing the richness of human life. And not surprisingly, this phrase, richness of human life, gives rise to an entirely new range of questions, questions that are sought to be answered through, through democracy, through freedom of speech, through religion, expression, cultural diversity, art, music, a whole lot of things, so the whole ideas of well-being or happiness, as Bhutan does it be, cross-national happiness. So in the long term, and uh, through the extended logic uh, that is inherent in this issue, it would mean exploring the nature of man, the human, and society, conditions that he creates for himself. What does it mean to be human? Uh, it's a question that's always hovering at the back of our minds, and is repeatedly asked, but answered only partly in many ways. We know, as we sit around the seminar table, all too often, somewhere deep inside many of the issues that we raise, this is a question that comes up again and again. And there will probably be no definitive answer. And, but to engage with and to reflect upon this question is also perhaps to be part of this ongoing process that makes us more human. This and other related questions, we, are no, we know, have always been uh, the core area of interest for scholars who are in the Indian Institute of Advanced And they will continue to remain so. And that is why I think that the International Center for Human Development and many of the concerns that we are engaged in overlap. And uh, the Institute provides that opportunity to uh, enable us to engage with those elements of this uh, this center that are uh, core to us and also if be able to take it further. The presence at the Institute of Scholars from different countries, especially of the developing countries, would uh, <coughs> certainly add a new dimension to the already hectic academic activity in the Institute. And 
I think it would strengthen the position uh, of the Institute in World Scholarship. Uh, once again, I welcome Mr. Thakur and other guests and, uh, and the fellows to this inaugural function. Uh, and I'm sure the fellows would be seeing more of this place and the fellows who would be coming shortly and engaging with them. Uh, thank you, and I invite uh, uh, Professor Peter Kusunga to give an introduction about the internet.
there's brown for earth, there's green for forest, there's blue for the seas, and there's uh, uh, orange for fire. So in many ways, we, we wanted to, and, and incidentally, even those colors are the colors of the Indian flag. So, so in, in, even in the choice of the logo, uh, we wanted that message to go across. Uh, and and uh, uh, in a sense, that the message is the message that we are both international but deeply supported by, by the government of India. Now, human development is core to the United Nations Development Program. It's an idea that uh, Professor Marcus and Raghul Rulhak presented as a way to actually measure development. And at the core of that idea, I mean, if one has to summarize it in a sentence, uh, human development is the expansion of human choices. It's the expansion of choices. It's, it's at the core of the, of the idea of freedom. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an important philosophical idea which they were presenting as an alternative way of measuring development. And then to convert an abstract idea into, into a policy uh, instrument, uh, they uh, produced a set, of, uh, a set of indicators and a set of measurement tools. Uh, indicators which focus on health, which focus on education, which focus on uh, uh, maternal mortality, child mortality, sanitation, etc., etc. And as you can see, if you if you've been following uh, the, the debates in the newspapers over the last uh, months or so, this big debate that's taking place between Amartya Sen and Jagdish Bhagwati is at the core of this idea of human development. Should you have growth before? redistribution, or should you have growth with redistribution? Uh, can you have growth with redistribution? So this is, this is an idea that all countries of the developing South have got to confront. And in, in many ways, our centre uh, uh, has that global aspiration. It is going to be the basis for producing the, 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 the knowledge uh, that, that governments would require, that civil society would require, that, that the academic world would require. So what really are the four objectives of this centre? Uh, I think our brochure has been has been circulated by my colleagues uh, Pallavi and uh, Amuta, and, and it states very clearly that we have four broad goals. The overall ambition of the centre is to move from analysis to action. The word action means action in terms of policy making, action in terms of being able to impact government uh, policy making. So one core area is research. We definitely want to create more knowledge about the, uh, the exercise of uh, development making. Uh, we want to provide policy advisory services. Uh, we want to strengthen South-South cooperation. And we want to develop a monitoring and evaluation of this exercise. Now, I, I stress South-South cooperation because I really do want you to appreciate that one of the great ambitions of the Indian Institute of Advanced Study and now the, the International Center for Human Development is to begin a knowledge conversation with countries of the global south. There are transformation experiences that we share. There are transformation paradoxes that we share. There are transformation challenges that we share. How do we, what should be the, the manner in which we distribute our limited resources? And therefore, building up a knowledge uh, uh, partnership uh, with countries of the global south is at the core of the International Centre for Human Development. It is not, it, 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 in many ways, therefore, it's a centre which, which has a kind of understated politics at the heart of it. And you can see this from the, from the activities that we have, uh, you can see this from the activities that we have created. Uh, we have, uh, one of the first things that we will be doing uh, is, is a fellowship program. Uh, we have uh, selected uh, six fellows who will be uh, coming to the institute at the end of this month, at the, on the 1st of September. Uh, and uh, four are from uh, Bhutan, one is from Laos, and one is from Cambodia. Uh, but I must tell you that the invitation for application went to 24 countries from the Asia-Pacific region. And from these 24 countries, we received 93 applications. And these 93 applications were subjected to a very critical scrutiny, and of which 12 applications were shortlisted and were 
uh, interviewed through Skype, from which six were selected. Now, each of these fellows, the theme for this year is social security. Uh, social security, as you know, has now become one of the big issues uh, for countries of the global south. How, you know, how, what, what kind of, I mean, the whole debate in India about right, rights-based development, you know, health, education, food, etc. These are issues at the heart of social security. So we identified social security as the theme of this year. The second activity that we will be doing is workshops and conferences. Please see that the activities are going to be very similar to the Institute of Advanced Studies programs. We are going to have workshops and conferences. Uh, we've already identified three that we are going to, uh, that we are in the process of initiating. Uh, the first one is with, uh, and, and this uh, I'm sure uh, certainly members of the press will appreciate. The first one is to celebrate SEVA, Self-Employed Women's Association, which is, uh, they, uh, they have now been in existence for 40 years. And, and we want to see, we want to see uh, SEVA as uh, an, an organization which has uh, uh, responded to livelihood insecurity of women, particularly the unorganized sector, livelihood insecurity. And through their organization, they've been actually able to give them some livelihood security. And my colleague Pallavi has been having the forefront of conceptualizing this and developing this uh, with SEVA. The second uh, activity we are planning is a round table on uh, ways of responding to poverty uh, with uh, Professor Rehman Soban uh, of Bangladesh. Uh, he has uh, just produced a report uh, where he's outlined 65 different policy responses to complex questions of poverty across South Asia. This is a South Asia wide report and we want to take one of those ideas and, 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 and see how we can push it forward. Uh, we are also wanting to uh, uh, have a conference. Uh, I'm saying this because I really want all of us to, in a sense, uh, have a stake in this imagination. You know, so um, it's not just a sector, an institute, somewhere on the top floor of the building that is going to uh, have foreign scholars. And, uh, it's, it's, in a sense, taking forward each of our personal concerns. So the third uh, workshop that we are planning is on violence against women. I mean, this has emerged from the crisis of December. But if you notice after December, there was a similar case took place in South Africa and something like that took place in Brazil. So we, we want uh, scholars from Brazil, South Africa and India to come together and to look at one aspect of this whole phenomenon of violence against women, to look at the law. Because each of these countries in a sense has created a legal instrument to respond to this. And then, you know, so, so what are the, how do they see the law as one of the effective ways of responding to the widespread violence against women in society. We, uh, we are planning, and this is very difficult, uh, you see the, 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 institute, the, the, the new center aims to occupy a certain niche. There, there are lots of knowledge producing institutions in the global south. So what is our special niche? Our, our niche is to find those areas in, in the south-south imagination that are under-occupied. So for example, on social security, we are planning to have a conference on, these are at the moment still in the planning stage, so please don't, you know, because producing a global event is, takes a lot of time. But this is to look at social security for indigenous people. One of the most affected communities in the development process are the indigenous people of, of, of the global south. So we want to try and, and, and the social security debate has ignored them. The social security debate has talked to people in urban areas, have talked to, but then the, the indigenous people have never been part. Now those who are working on the indigenous people say we don't want to dis be part of your policy making, we want to be, you know, so there's a, there's a deep cultural question. Do we want to be part of, the, we want rights, we don't want welfare. This is one debate. So what do we do? We need to, we need to engage with this debate. We are, the, the institute, is also in the process, and this I, mean, I say with some degree of pride, uh, is already in the process of giving advice to uh, countries of the Asia Pacific when they when they are preparing their human development report. So we are already we've already given advice to about four countries in the in in, in uh, I think Cambodia, uh, Timor Leste, uh, who are preparing their human development reports. They give us a draft, we respond to that draft, and they take it forward. We have an invitation from, from Mauritius 
to partner with their government institution to build up their uh, human development for the, the training for their bureaucrats. Uh, we are in the next month, uh, in the month of October, organizing a training program for uh, human development practitioners in the Asia Pacific region uh, who will be coming to Delhi on issues of human development. So, training, advice, etc., is already has already been developed. Even though we are a very young center, uh, and we are also going to try and develop, uh, take this idea and, and have it uh, enter uh, universities across the world. Uh, so, curriculum development is going to be an important part. And, and like uh, the the uh, Shimla uh, Institute, we want to run uh, study weeks and winter schools. So ultimately, each section of society that in a sense needs to make human development a part of their policy making. Uh, we hope through this small initiative, supported by the UNDP, supported by the government of India, but with a global aspiration, we'll be able to, to in a sense, impact this global discourse on development and make it more human-centric. Make it more human-centric with that ultimate goal that if we are able to produce the knowledge, and that knowledge is able to impact policies, then maybe uh, as a result of our process deepening and widening, we will be able to expand the range of human choices. Thank you.
it is a great opportunity for us to project India's soft power too. So on that, Professor D'Souza had made a brief reference in his talk, but I feel that uh, that is the that is also a very important uh, point which we should uh, look at. But more than that, more than that is uh, this argument or this um, uh, this uh, way of thinking that uh, it is not just the rate of growth which matters. It is in fact many other things which figures do not speak, which is important. So therefore, um, the ever since of this um, human development index debate has been going on, <coughs> starting from Dr. Amit Sen and uh, Nagobol up their uh, seminal work from this message to the rest of the world. Uh, the government of India was very deeply engaged because we are a democratically elected country, the largest democracy in the world. And for us, uh, pure statistics, statistics and um, the rate of growth, we feel that it doesn't summarize the entire picture of the country. There are a whole lot of other things, the social aspects, the education aspects, which are very, very important. So therefore, Government of India was very keen and uh, in the Indian Institute of Advanced Studies, we found a very apt partner and uh, more so the enthusiasm and keenness shown by Professor D'Souza that we today have this center here. Like I said, this is an endeavor between the UN system, represented by UNTP, and the government of India, represented by an Prime Ministry, in which we will work very sincerely to spread this message across, not only to embed it in our own country, but also to the rest of the world. More so to the European countries. More so to the countries which really look forward to India. Whenever I attend any international level conference, especially the uh, countries in Africa, they really look, look up in India. So I think, um, without sounding patronizing, I think we should do our duty. So therefore, if we are able to um, create, the, I would say, an army of, uh, uh, of development, human development <coughs> experts, uh, but if we are able to, over a period of time, have goodwill ambassadors for this concept, and India is the perfect platform. We have the legitimacy, we have the scale. Uh, so through that, I think we will be able to uh, go forward and achieve this uh, great goal, <coughs> which our government also wants to uh, take it further. Um, while doing this, um, there are a lot of other institutes also, I'd just like to bring it to your information, who want to compete for this project. But it is uh, due to uh, the good name which Indian Institute of Advanced Study has, the good name which it has, and also because of the efforts of Dr. Peter Trisuza, that today this center is um, in India, and that it makes me particularly very proud that it is in my home state, which is Himachal. So, I think there will be a lot of <clears throat> other fallouts from this uh, collaboration. Number one would be the fellows of the institute would gain tremendously by the exposure to this project. We are aware that part of the project is going to be located in Delhi, part of it is going to be here. Uh, but I think um, the interaction and the exposure which our fellows will have here, the regular uh, fellows will have here, especially interacting with the foreign um, uh, fellows who, are, who will be selected, I think that would be a real uh, added uh, advantage. 
it will be also a big um, advantage for my people from my brotherhood. For example, the people who are engaged in policy making and people who are uh, engaged in implementation of the, of the scheme. I'm sure through the workshops, seminars, colloquium, etc., which uh, several of them will be held both here and uh, Delhi or elsewhere in the country or even abroad, uh, our people uh, who are engaged in this uh, aspect will get tremendous kind of uh, boost in it. Uh, another thing which I would like to, which I expect from this uh, project is that there should be certain kind of, uh, even within our own country, there are a whole lot of uh, human development index reports uh, published by several state governments. A lot of talk went on, there's a lot of excitement, but towards the end it didn't really come up to much. Every state government had its own indicators, probably the indicators which suited them. There was no uniform kind of an indicator. So with the result that the concept of comparability disappeared completely. We had again, yet and again, chosen a path which is easy. I think time has come that through this uh, uh, project which we have in collaboration with UNDP, we should take some harder look. <coughs> Perhaps it's uh, symptomatic of our, the way we look at it, um, our attitude. Uh, about two, three months back, I had a workshop of universities, which was done by, in collaboration with uh, Times Higher Education and, uh, uh, and uh, Thomson Reuters. And there again, I was surprised to see that all the time, our academicians, um, vice chancellors of universities, they said, that, oh, this is not applicable to us. We are up a completely different, we have different problems. This is absolutely uh, no, not relevant for us. So I think this kind of attitude we can't have any longer. If we are part of a globalized world, then we have to play the same set of games with the rest of the world is playing. So therefore, I think these indices which we develop through our IC4HD should be it should be uniform and should have a similar yardstick running across. And there should be no excuses. If we have faltered in certain aspects, then we have faltered. Let us admit it. Let us work towards resolving it rather than finding an enemy. So I think this is a short message which, which came to me in the morning and I am uh, pretty sure that this aspect will be taken care of. Lastly about um, this building. I think this building is such a great um, monument, a heritage property, which I, each time I visit here, I, I go back with a great sense of guilt. I had slight um, experience of restoring the AT theater that you see today. And uh, I feel very resolved that we must do something about this building. In the ministry, uh, I have earmarked about 50 crore rupees for restoration of this, uh, this building. Since this group, we have to kind of uh, fight with our finance wing because they said that your work is not to uh, restore buildings, your work is to teach and propagate uh, <laughs> education and stuff like that. But I think if we have taken this building, it is our duty, our responsibility to take good care of it. If we don't do it, it is a reflection of our state of mind, about our state of values. So therefore, um, with the uh, help of the director, Chetan Singh now, earlier Peter Susuza, we have a concrete plan. So therefore we will be working on it immediately, in fact, after this conference.
conference, we'll be having a detailed meeting on it. And I would like to assure all of you that um, in a few years, we have a mm, much uh, better building. Uh, in the end, I once again thank um, both Peter as well as Jason, both of them dear friends of mine, uh, for inviting me. Uh, and I'm sure that um, whatever this project um, intends to achieve will fully be achieved uh, in the evil hands of Peter D'Souza and very supporting and a very positive acting director we have in Chetan Singh. Thank you very much.
I thank our media, media partners for their cooperation and coverage of this program. And I also would like to thank the two service agencies, CPWD and ASI, for their contribution and maintenance of this building in repair work. I mean, there was a lot of pressure for them to, to, to make this area ready for the renovation. So, I would like to place in the record for their sincere effort and the kind of work which they have undertaken to, to make, the, make this center ready. And finally, my sincere gratitude to, goes to all my staff members, especially the state division. And I see Bhunajti Delhi Unit for excellent job done by them. Without, <laughs> without their support, this function would not have been grand success. I once again thank you all. Thank you very much. Then if you have any questions, in five minutes we can have our question answers. And before, after that we have arranged tea and lunch for everyone. So I request everyone to join the tea and uh, lunch which is arranged in the office mess. Thank you very much. advice is going to come from the ASI because they are the custodians as far as the heritage part is concerned. Execution will be done by CPWD. There will be a steering committee at Delhi and there will be one local under the director and one committee which will be uh, monitored uh, at my level or at the level of the director also. So this is going to be a very high power kind of thing so that uh, constant pressure, uh, this is actually a coordination issue. Funds have been located, we have, like I told you, we have earmarked 50 crore rupees for this. We have also got a study done by one of the heritage, what is the name? Ava Narayan Lamba. She has done a study. So that study has to be seen by ASI, by the present director, and uh, you will see how it works out in today's meeting. But the aspects which need to be covered uh, immediately, for example, roofing is the most important thing. Because if water percolates, if the circuit topi pakki nahi hogi, or the bagi sab bega, head should be kept, you know, the whole building should be kept dry. And secondly, seepage issues also. Foundation issues. If the water seeps into it, then the foundation. These two are the uh, conservation is the top priority. There are <coughs> the heritage and the finer aspects. Pardon? Renovation. And renovation. Renovation, etc., would be secondary. This is broadly the way in which we, we intend to proceed. Any any time gap, time period of it which is our completion of the plan? Well, um, well first let us start it. I think I feel that this kind of a project should uh, should uh, get over in about two years' time. So we will take out the actionable points priority-wise, and then start working on it. Whatever the report of the uh, of that expert is, uh, that cannot just be followed blindly. You know, you have to see what is your priority. Depending upon that, you will And there will be a local committee at the director's level, and there will be a uh, committee at the MHRD level and we will be working very closely with the Ministry of Culture because ASI has to be kept on board because they are the custodians as per the law 
and at the same time secretary is the executive uh, is the executive body. So this in a nutshell is the approach. One question about the indices that you refer, that this uh, institute aims at developing a uniform indices. Is it, are you looking at a global platform or is it a national or a statewide something? I would not say uh, a uniform thing, but by and large that comparability should be there. It cannot just have totally different indicators which do not add up to anything. At the national level it should add up somewhere, no, it should be able to compare. If Bihar is looking at something, uh, then the way it has reached to that uh, uh, <coughs> conclusion should be comparable and the methodology etc. should be the same as for Himachal or from some other states. So there should be comparability so that we know that which state is doing better which state is not doing better. Otherwise you can have a glossy report which doesn't say much. Yes please. please. Uh, so one of the things we want to do is every year organize in Shimla uh, a study week on indicators train to, and particularly to train uh, young scholars those who are doing their PhD or post PhD to, to basically to be able to look at the data and, 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 and see how that data can be translated into the indicators. <coughs> this, this we want to make that is the strength of the Shimla Institute you know we every year we have uh, a school that we have a study week, so we want to now expand that to the uh, You may also wish to look at some of the restoration that the institute has undertaken. Please look at some of the offices because that is what we hope the future will look like. Thank you.